please be sure Pam Furman or Reverend Yost get the names so that we can add them to our list to um, recognize on that day. Just a reminder about rekeying the doors. Um, if you need a key rather than using the code door with the, the code pad, please see Pam about that. Trunk or treat we're going to do on the 29th from 2 to 4 out in the parking lot. So if you're able to um, participate in that, we just park your vehicle, open the back, and you can decorate it a little, hand out treats to the, the kids. I think last year we had about 100 children that came through. So if you're able to participate in that, there is a sign-up sheet in the back. If you have questions, please see Mallory. Um, consistory meeting this Tuesday at 7. And if anyone is able to come like 6.30, we have some things downstairs that we need to haul down to the garage from the fall festival yesterday. So if anybody is able to come to the church Tuesday evening at 6.30 just to help, the one big thing that we got to get back down there is the the wooden board that you stick your face in to take your picture. So we have to, that takes probably two to three people um, to get that back on a truck and down. So if anybody's able to help with that, please let me know. There will be um, Sunday school in all areas today. So please think about staying for that. And Bev, you have some announcements from yesterday. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank all of you, all the stormtroopers, the bakers, the makers, the donators, the volunteers, the enjoyers, and all those who prayed for a great event. It was a beautiful event, no matter the weather that we had. So I want to, instead of naming all the names, because I wouldn't want to miss anybody, I just want to thank everybody, because I know everybody had some contribution in some very good way. And also, it was just a beautiful time and thanks again and also a special thank you to Judy Willow she does uh, such a preparation and a lot of time that is spent over the last uh, two months so a special thank you for her because she's not here today but she's saying uh, that she would like to be here and let you know that and I see we have sunshine today so we have to take the storms and the sun the same thank you very much and Sharon Ryan, I think, has an announcement. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank all those who were pie bakers. Um, we do have winners, and for actually for all those who voted and took part in that. For the adult female, Mallory Leitzel took first place with her snickerdoodle apple cheesecake. Ella Willow took second place with her cherry pie, which she didn't even realize that she had entered. <laughs> Elaine Rocky took third place for her butterscotch pumpkin pie. For the adult male, guys, you gotta start baking because Craig can't be the top winner of every year because he was the only entry. But congratulations, Craig, for doing that. So hopefully you'll have some competition next year. And for the youth up to ages 18, uh, Bentley Yerrick took first place for his Oreo pie, which really seemed to be a top winner. And I looked back over the papers from last year, and he actually took second place last year. So I think that Oreo pie must really be a hit. Collins Rap, Ralph, or whatever his name is, took um, second place in the chocolate chick pie. And oh, I forgot to tell the pie that Greg made, sorry. Um, he made a chocolate peanut butter um, crisp pie, chip pie. And third place, which, um, was Connor Shively, who actually is my um, little guy who used to live next door to me in my previous place. He took uh, third place with his creamy lemon pie that him and his grandmother took part in. So I thought that was really nice that this is kind of a neat opportunity for you to share that kind of experience with your grandkids. So, um, and we had, uh, I think, four or five youth this year, so that was really good. Um, so again, I just want to thank all those, um, especially the, the prize winners, and for all those who took part in tasting all those pies. And you know, I recommend that when you come to the fall festival, that if you want dessert, what you first do is have your meal, and then you come to the pie tasting contest <laughs> and get your dessert. <laughs> so it's kind of a neat way. I also want to mention that there are four mums left 
there's one right at the entryway down like when you first come in the front doors and then there's three downstairs on the table if anybody would like a mum they are for sale six dollars a piece you do get that little tray underneath it um, for the plant and if you would like to purchase a mum please see either me or John to make that purchase thank you anybody else have announcements I see a hand in the back there I want to thank those people who have signed up for the highway cleanup next week but and this is a big but we do not have enough people signed up at this point even to work independently rather than in pairs uh, to uh, complete the, si the uh, cleanup uh, so we do need more people and they are welcome thank you very much and that sign-up sheet is in the back um, if you can help with highway cleanup or if you have questions about that see Don Bowman um, a couple other things from yesterday again like Bev said thank you to everyone who came out we weren't sure how it was going to go moving it inside but it went wonderfully we had a crowd we had tons of kids so thank you for everybody who has helped in any way we do have some soup left over there are quarts down in the refrigerator in the kitchen. Um, there's ham and bean, veggie, and there's one chicken corn. They're $5 a quart. Um, if you want to get, just help yourself and then see that Bev gets the money, myself, Sharon Ryan, any of us that were helping, we can see it gets to the right spot. So if you're interested in that. On the table in the back, there are some baked goods that were left as well as some hot dog buns. If you're interested in any of that, just a donation. Just leave a donation there and take what you can use um, with those things. And then there is a container of gourds back there. They are free for anybody who wants some gourds to decorate at home. There's some really nice ones in there. So if you need gourds for around your house, grab a bag and help yourself to the gourds. Anybody have anything else? Okay, we'll begin worship with the ringing of the bell. come before the glory of our Lord today to celebrate the life that is ours in Christ Jesus. We invite the congregation to rise as you are able as we begin with our call to worship. Let's thank the Lord for the Lord is good. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare God's praise? Remember us, O Lord, when you show favor to your people, that we may enjoy your blessings. Amen. Let us join together in singing, Rejoice, ye pure in heart.
Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us and to a people of righteousness and peace. Give us a share of your spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing Awesome God. seated as we invite the children forward. Didn't I just see you yesterday? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what do you think what were some of the good things that happened yesterday? Well, we were at church here yesterday, weren't we? So we had church here yesterday, right? So what were some of the good things that God was doing yesterday? Helping us have a party, right? And that was a very good thing that God was doing because God wants us to be happy. And have a good time with each other. So what was your favorite thing yesterday? <laughs> the time pitch. Oh, look at Sandy's two, two thumbs up there, right? Yeah. Now, do you know what I did yesterday? I threw one dime yesterday. I just threw one dime, and I got a glass. And I quit after that. Well, I had more dimes, but I was going to quit while I was ahead. Because I got one on the first pitch. Oh, well, I gave up after I that. Think I got one about on the first pitch. Did you get one on your first pitch, too? About. about. All right, good. So what else was good yesterday? Um, Who was pretty good? How about the games? <laughs> I did like the decorations. Yeah? Did you get a, a smiley face pumpkin or a scary face pumpkin? Oh, you got the cat. 
I like that. That was good. All right. So do you think everybody had a good time yesterday? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think you're exactly right. We had church yesterday, right? Because there are many different kinds of ways we can worship God, right? Yeah. So we're here to worship God this morning here in the sanctuary. But downstairs yesterday, we were really worshiping God. Because one of the ways that we worship God is that we have a party. We celebrate with each other. We have games, we have food, we have good conversation, there was music, right? So it was a good time. So the dime pitch was your favorite. I won, I about 11 glasses. 11 glasses. So you can invite us over for dinner. Um, not all of us. Not all of us, so. <laughs> Just a few here and there. Maybe about five. Maybe about five. Okay. My whole family is probably about three, four, five. Yeah. Good. That's good. Yeah. So my favorite was the pie tasting. Pie tasting. Where? It was in one of those side rooms. Yeah. You probably couldn't hear us slopping up the pies because you were hearing all the money hitting the glass. You weren't hearing it. Okay. Well, we had fun. Did everybody else have fun? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Good. Yeah. So we want to thank God for a really good time yesterday, right? Okay. One of the ways we thank God is to pray. Because God wants us to pray. And I got my Christmas tree. You got your Christmas tree? Yeah, but it's a fake one. It's, it's one how, how can a Christmas tree be a fake Christmas tree? doesn't need water. But is it a fake Christmas tree? Yeah. It's still... It came, it came in a box. It came in a box. <laughs> okay. So you don't have to water it. <laughs> but you'll have it for the next year then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we do all kinds of things to adapt, don't we? Yeah. Good. We ready to pray? Okay. Our Father... Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Very good. Thank you. Nothing today. You, did you have too many yesterday? Too much yesterday? Yeah. You don't want to take one for tomorrow? You're good? Okay. Please join me in singing He is Exalted. of God this morning in our first scripture reading from the book of Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 through 14. <clears throat> 
the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold which are in your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, but of you I will make a great nation." But Moses besought the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does thy wrath burn hot against thy people, whom thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say with evil intent did he bring them forth to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil, evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou didst swear by thine own self, and didst say to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all of this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Here ends the first lesson. second lesson comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Eudodia, and I entreat Sintichi to agree in the Lord. And I ask you also, true yoke fellow, Help these women, for they have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. Here ends today's lesson. May God add his blessing to the hearing and understanding of his word. Thank you, Bonnie. Heavenly Father, You are a God of peace. For that we rejoice. We rejoice that you have called us to be your own. To know and to follow your will. To share in the abundance of the blessings that you pour out upon us. Blessings of promise, of presence 
steadfast care. We thank you, gracious Lord, for inviting us to your heavenly banquet to share in the fulfillment of your will. We thank you, gracious Lord, as you call us together to be your people. And we thank you, Lord, for calling us forth to share your good news in all that we say and do. We call upon you, Lord, to bless these offerings as a token of our thanksgiving to you. Continually use us and use the gifts that you have given us to further the gospel, to spread your peace to uplift all who have fallen so that all might come to know your will, your promise, and your everlasting peace. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and in fact killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves. The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad, so that the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I think one of my favorite philosophers of all time wore the number eight for the New York Yankees, Yogi Bear. Yogi always would say something to make us chuggle, and we'll try to figure out, what were you thinking, Yogi? One of my favorites as he was asked about a particular restaurant in the Bronx close to the Yankee Stadium. And he said, the person asked Yogi how he likes that restaurant. And he said, well, nobody goes there anymore because the parking lot's always full and the waiting line's too long. And then he said, if you get to the fork in the road, take it. Well, the people of Israel, in their wilderness journey, seemed to get to the fork in the road. 
and they wondered where Moses was. Why is Moses taking so much time? When we get to a, a fork in the road, unlike Yogi, we have to make a decision about which fork we will take. Well, the people of Israel decided that they weren't satisfied with the fork that God was leading them to through Moses and through the gift of the law. And so they decided to create their own God, an idol, a golden calf, molten out of earrings and all kinds of jewelry. One of the things that we as Christians do is we have to make choices. And we make those choices day in and day out. But how aligned are our choices with God's will? For God has taken the initiative from the very beginning to have a relationship with us. A relationship that includes not only God's presence, but an idea of what God's will is really about. So God invites us, invites us to have an awareness, an awareness of God's will. And then not only does God invite us into that awareness, but God also provides and empowers us within that awareness to follow God's will. We might ask ourselves, why were the people impatient? Why were they not willing to wait on God and wait on the revelation of God through Moses? Sometimes that happens in our own lives. Sometimes we think we know better than God of which fork in the road to take. God has continually sent emissaries and ambassadors into our world to share God's will to share God's hope for us. And because of that, from Moses on down to the later prophets, God has revealed the kind of participation that God desires of us in this life. That is how we are called to live. Jesus was sharing some of this with his disciples. And particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, he uses parables to teach a lesson. To teach a lesson to the people about how. How we are to respond to God's initiative. How we are to respond to God's invitation. To participate in the kind of life that God wants us to live. On several occasions, Jesus uses the image of a great banquet, great feast that we are invited to. In today's parable, it was a wedding banquet. A wedding banquet in which people were invited to participate in the wedding of the king's son. But they didn't show up. They didn't show up. And even when they were confronted about why they didn't show up, they had all kinds of excuses. And others were just downright hateful about it. How are our lives 
like being invited to this great big wedding banquet. How do we see that invitation playing a part and a role in our lives? Are we sometimes impatient? Do we sometimes believe that we have a better idea than God about which decisions we should make? Do we just go on about our business and pay very little attention to God's will, God's initiative? and God's invitation. Part of what we have to recognize is the manner in which God has chosen to be with us, to be aware of how God wants us to know where God is and what God is up to. Liam said something very important a little while ago because yesterday we had church. And we have to recognize that when we're together as the body of Christ, sometimes in sanctuaries, sometimes in social halls, sometimes out on the playing fields, wherever we might be. Those are opportunities for us to give thanksgiving to God for being church, for being church as a witness of honoring and glorifying God and being blessed and happy because God has invited us to participate. To participate in God's presence, to participate in God's promises, to participate with one another the blessings and the hope that God has in each and every one of us. So when we look at how we respond, how we respond to God's initiative and God's invitation, one of the better ways to envision that is how do we participate with one another? How do we participate with one another as sisters and brothers in Christ? Do we show up? Do we show up and participate with the blessings of God's promises and God's will? Or do we murmur on the side of a mountain like the people of Israel? being impatient with the way things seem to be going, not entirely happy or feeling blessed about that invitation, that invitation to go and pursue life in a land flowing with milk and honey. Yesterday, our social hall was not necessarily filled with milk and honey, but it was filled with pies and pulled pork and french fries and all kinds of other things. A lot of bags filled of candy. But more so than that, it was filled with smiles. It was filled with the smiles of people who gathered together and participated participated in life, participated in the zeal of knowing that we are blessed, 
participated with one another, even when the elements outside were damp and wet. We came together. We came together. We were the people of God. Just like we are doing at this very hour. We have come together again as the people of God to participate, to participate in the kind of life that God calls us to. To bear witness. Because as Jesus shared at the very beginning of the parable, the kingdom of heaven is light. Yesterday was an example of the kingdom of heaven here. This morning is an example of the kingdom of heaven here. But how ready are we for it? How ready are we to participate in it? Sometimes when Jesus shares a parable particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, it comes as some pretty good news that the kingdom of heaven is here. It comes with some invitations, like to a wedding banquet. But sometimes it comes with a warning, as it does in today's parable. King tells his servants to go out and just bring people in. Fill the wedding hall banquet room. Fill it it with people. Fill it with people. But when God is here participating with us, God wants us to see, are we really ready to participate? Are we all in? Are we ready to live the kind of lives that God wants us to live? In the parable that Jesus shares in Matthew's gospel, uh, the king notices that it looks like someone there at the wedding hall is not quite ready, not prepared, not dressed in the wedding robe. And he's sent out sent out out into that darkness where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth and that can be quite frightful quite frightful to each and every one of us but yet the good news in all of this is that the journey continues The journey continues for us as we participate in God's promises. Where we bear witness to God's presence in the way, in the many ways that we come together as God's people. So when we think about what it's like to be church, what it's like to be the people of God. It's first, most important for us, is to listen. To listen to God. To know what God's plans are all about. And to know the many ways throughout human history that God has continuously let God's people know about God's plan. To know about God's will. Because God doesn't want us to be lost in the darkness. God does not want us to be despairing about which fork to take when we get to the fork in the road. God wants us to know that God 
has laid out a vision for us. A vision for us as the people of God about how we can participate in the fullness of life. In the fullness of what God wants for each and every one of us. Individually, God wants us to have a relationship with God. A relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it doesn't just stop there individually. God wants us to be a people. A people together. People who will be willing, willing to listen to God and take that path that God has laid out for us, a path that leads to life, a path that leads to good and sound and fruitful relationships. God has for us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a way for us, a way for us to live out the abundance of God's promises, to live out the unity that even Jesus prays for. Jesus and the Father prayed that we all will be one as the Father and the Son are one. So the invitation is out. The invitation is out for each and every one of us. So what are we going to do with this invitation? Are we going to stick it up on the fridge on a magnet and forget about it? Or are we going to hide it in all the other pieces of mail that we receive and wonder where it might be? Or are we going to get up and go? We're going to get up and go and participate in that invitation. Participate in that way of life. Now we all know that sometimes we will get impatient. Sometimes we think we will have better things to do. Sometimes we will even ignore God. But the one good news that we have is that God keeps on sending that invitation out to us. He's not withdrawing that invitation. God will keep sending that invitation to us. And God only asks of one thing, that we participate, that we participate, and that in that participation, that we are ready to listen, ready to follow, and ready to be the people of God kind of people, the kind of people that will have a party in the social room one day and enter into the sanctuary the next day to realize that it was church both days because we were here with God and we were here with one another. So let's participate from now on.
as we gather together as God's people today. We are participating. Participating in the ways in which God has called us together. We are the people of God. So let us share our joys and our concerns, our blessedness with one another. Joys and concerns. Yes, sir. Sure, yeah, very good. Other joys and concerns. It was an example of taking the church on the road. That was a wet one there. Other joys and concerns. I know many of you are tired from yesterday. But <laughs> yes. Other joys and concerns. Then let us bow our head in prayer. Good and gracious Father, we thank you for inviting us to participate in life. In the life, life you have called us to. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have taken the initiative to pour out your will upon us. We give you thanks, gracious Lord, that you call us together as the church. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through the gift of creation, for pouring out your abundance through the natural world. for calling a people to be a blessing so that that blessing will reach out to all nations and all peoples. To help us to realize that we're blessed to be a blessing. And we give you thanks, God. That even sometimes when we make excuses, sometimes when we ignore you, you continually take the initiative to send out the invitation to us to follow your will, to follow the path that you have laid before us. That we may be able in our participation in life to bear witness to your grace, your mercy, your steadfast care, and your everlasting love. We ask, dear Lord, that you would renew us and fortify us each and every day that we may continue our journey with you. We give you thanks, gracious Lord, that you continually raise up before us instruments of your peace, instruments of your will, that you continually raise before us examples of all those who understand your blessing 
and who share that blessing with one another. Sometimes in the confines of our sanctuaries where we offer praise and thanksgiving, sometimes in our social halls where we come together to glorify your name and to celebrate the blessedness and happiness that we find when we come together. We thank you, gracious Lord, for the ways in which you continually come to us and meet us where we are. And help us to get back on the righteous path even when we stray. We know all well God, that we often stray apart from your will, from your path. But we give thanksgiving that we know that you do not leave us alone, that you rescue us from the paths of darkness and despair, that you let your light shine upon us in such ways that we can see the vision of life that you have for us. We thank you, gracious Lord, for being able to take the church on the road to our shut-ins, to all the people who aren't able to get here with us. But you also help us to take the church on the road to our schools and our workplaces and our neighborhoods, even to the commercial centers, so that your will can be found not only here in the sanctuary, but throughout the world. For your invitation includes righteousness and holiness and the fullness of life. You even take the church on the road to those places where those suffer of broken bodies and spirits and relationships. And you guide us together to be a people to bring healing and hope. To celebrate our participation in life. We particularly want to offer our prayers this morning for Wendell, Ella, Brian, Lisa, Walter, Bonnie, Cindy, Tony, Mel, Joan, Linda, Dolores, Kitty, Jeff, Mary Lou, Dave, Cameron, and all others whom we name before you now. And continually guide us so that we might be able to bring healing and hope to one another. And help us to go forth from this hour, this day, knowing that no matter where we are, you will find us and you will draw us together as the family of God, as sisters and brothers in Christ. And that you will enable us and empower us to reach out into the world and also extend invitations to be the church, to be the body of Christ, and to know that your peace and 
and your peace alone is available to us through Christ Jesus and through the power of your Spirit. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our everlasting hope. Now we invite the congregation to rise as you're able, as we sing together, what a friend we have in Jesus. Now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together we may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.